Hi class, this is your instructor Jamal Mullen. Just want to welcome you all to Object Oriented Application Development. I'm excited to get started. I hope you guys are as well. So in this tutorial I want to go through um, how to actually access and set up NetBeans. So in this class we'll be using Java. So in NetBeans is the environment, the IDE that we'll be using to actually develop and code and run Java projects. So there are two methods that we can use to actually access NetBeans. The first is the simplest way, um, is through virtual labs. So on the left navigation panel of Brightspace, uh, where you see all the modules, toward the bottom you should see something uh, called virtual labs, a link called virtual labs. If you click on this link, it should open up um, few, more information about uh, a document on how to actually access log in to virtual labs and also a link to the virtual labs page so that link will actually take you to this page here this portal page so this is the virtual uh, desktop that's provided by snhu you each should have an account and when you log in you should see this page something that looks like this you should have this app available called java programming so to access the app you click launch after clicking launch, you should see this page. So this is the actual virtual desktop. You can see everything's through a URL. It's not local. It's through a virtual virtual labs, virtual desktop environment. So as you see here, you have a few icons, just like you would for any um, desktop. But you see the NetBeans IDE 8.2 is already installed and ready to use. So all we have to do is click on it and it opens up NetBeans IDE and you can, you can begin your Java development. So this is the landing page. So it's simple. It's easy to access. It's already set up, ready for you to use. Um, the only slight downfall is that it can be a bit slower since it is run through your internet. So it depends on your internet connection, things of that sort. But um, it does allow me to be able to share screens with you or you share screens with me to be able to help you through various um, issues that you may be running into when writing your code. So the other option is to install it locally, which will allow it to run much faster. So virtual labs is okay, but the other option is to run locally. So either will work. But if you can run locally, to do that, um, I will show you how to go about that. So the first step is to, so you want to go to Google search and you want to type in NetBeans 8.2 with Java SDK. So this is a bundle, JDK 8U111 with NetBeans 8.2. So NetBeans requires this version of uh, JDK to run properly. So this is a bundle that will allow you to install, with one installation, install both NetBeans and JDK and have everything run correctly. So you want to click on this second link. So the second link will take you here to this page. You can also access it directly if you want to just click, uh, uh, type in this URL in your browser. So the first thing you want to do is click on Accept License Agreement. So now, depending on the operating system you're using, you want to click on the appropriate uh, download, executable download. So if you're using Windows 10, the 64-bit version, you'd want to, or Windows 64-bit, you want to use this link here, if you're using 32-bit, you want to use this link, and so on, Mac OS, Linux, etc. So if I'm using Windows 10 64-bit, I'm going to click on this link, and it'll allow me to save it in the appropriate location, and it will download. I can just, when it's finished downloading, I can install that, and I'll just keep everything default while installing, and it, it should, when finished, you just see the NetBeans IDE 8.2 on your desktop. And just like in the virtual labs, you just double click on it and it should open the NetBeans IDE. So when you open it up, it should look like this, just like it did on the virtual labs uh, desktop. So the virtual desktop, same exact IDE, except now it's installed locally on my machine. So I just want to show you a quick few things on using NetBeans, nav navigating through it, um, and also just developing Java code and projects with that within the NetBeans environment. 
So when you create a new project, you want to click File, New Project. You see this icon to the left. You actually also see it here. So you can click on that New Project icon. And here is uh, the, this window that pops up. So under Categories, you want to leave it as Java. And you want to select Java Application. There's other options, but you can ignore those for now. You just want to focus on Java Application. Click Next. And you want to create a project name. So we'll call it Test project so if you noticed um, here you can actually enter in the project location you can specify the directory in which you want to save the project and as you type the project name it actually creates this project folder at the specified uh, location and down here it also creates this main class by default uh, with the project name with the period before it and this um, test project all in lowercase letters so this creates the main class and you can leave everything else default and click finish so we click finish you should see this so this is um your project navigator on the left hand side uh, has your source packages and here's the test project.java file that's open here so i just want to quickly go through again um just a sample uh project so that you so that you become familiar with uh, using NetBeans and its capabilities and actually writing code and running the code. So I'm going to be doing a few things. I don't expect you to know exactly um, how to do it yourself at this point and what it all means, the syntax and how to do things yourself. I don't expect you to know how to do it yet, um, but as you go through the class, you'll be able to uh, do these things on your own. And understand what all this syntax means so the first thing I want to do is create um, code that will actually print hello world to the console so if we type system dot out dot print line and if you, and you notice that as you type um, it gives you the possible methods that you can call for that specific uh, class so we'll type system dot out dot print line hello world so this should print hello world to the console so that's it so we're going to run it so to run the project you can click on this uh, green arrow here or you can click run run project or you can click f6 so this will build and run the, the project so if we click run this green arrow you can see here at the bottom in the console it says build successful and you see hello world was printed to the console so it worked. We built our first project. So say we wanted to do something a bit more. Say we wanted to ask the user, what is your favorite restaurant? So um, in order to do that, what we can do is create what's called a scanner class. We'll call it SC equals new scanner system dot in. So this is going to create a new scanner class called SC. Um, scanner object and it is a new scanner and it's going to take in system.in input from the console so if you notice there's these red underlines that uh, red, red uh, underline under the scanner so this basically is when you see this red underline it's saying that there's an error somewhere something's not right so you can see in this pop-up window it says cannot find symbol uh, symbol class scanner so this means that we did not we forgot to import the scanner class so what we can do is that on the top here, type import java.util. Again, you see these options that pop up that we can select from. Scanner. Dot scanner. And if you notice, as we type it, it actually will tell us more about the scanner class. So we don't necessarily have to have everything memorized, but if we, as we type in the scanner class, it tells you Every, all the different uh, methods, different things you can do with the scanner class. So, and it also has sample code for it. So here you can read in an integer, um, read in a long type uh, integer. You can do many different things. You can read in uh, files, uh, you can use delimiters, etc. So if you want to want more, want more information about how to use the scanner class, you can refer to this. So it's a cool little function within NetBeans. So we'll type We'll finish this off. Types.scanner. So import java.util.scanner. 
Great. So now if we go down here, you notice that the red underlines are gone. So we now have correctly imported the scanner class and we can use that. So if you notice, there's this gray underline. So this is means that there's just a, a slight warning. There's not an error. It'll still compile correctly. But there's a warning just saying that we haven't yet used this variable SC. So let's use it. So let's type in uh, text to the console. Let's output text to the console that prompts the user to enter in their favorite restaurant. So we type system.out.print. Please enter your favorite restaurant. Okay. So this is going to prompt the user. Let's add a colon to space. So prompt the user to enter in their favorite restaurant. And if you notice, we use print instead of print line. So print will not automatically go to the next line. It allows them to enter in their favorite restaurant on the same line as this text. So if we typed, well, first let's create a new variable called restaurant. So it's going to be a string restaurant equals new string. So we've instantiated this variable called restaurant as a string. And we want to set restaurant equal to SC. So we're going to use the scanner object that we created dot, sorry, dot next line. So this reads in the next line that the user enters into the console. So now we want to actually output that restaurant that they entered as a screen, as a string into the console. So we say system.out.println. We'll say tomorrow you should go to, and then we're gonna insert restaurant, the string that the user entered for lunch. Okay. So basically we just are outputting tomorrow you should go to, and then the restaurant variable string, the value that was entered as a string when we prompted the user to enter the favorite restaurant and then for lunch. So let's see if this works. So you see, we clicked run and now you see hello world, which we still had printed out here and it says, please enter your favorite restaurant. So we'll say Burger King enter. So you can see it output it tomorrow. You should go to Burger King for lunch. So there you go. It outputted the restaurant that the user entered as a string. So great, you completed another project. So once you've completed your projects, as you go through your uh, assignments in this course, um, there's a way to actually zip up the project and submit it. So this is how you actually submit the project. You'll go to, you'll navigate to the project directory and you'll zip it up. And there's instructions and in, again on Brightspace on how to do this but quickly show you. So here is uh, where our test project is located. So to actually zip it up into a zip file, compress it into a zip file so that you can submit the zip file. You right click on the project directory. You go to send to and click compressed zip folder. And there you go. You have your zip file that you can then submit. So in this tutorial, you were exposed to how to access virtual labs um, and access NetBeans within virtual labs, as well as accessing NetBeans by downloading and installing it locally on your own machine. Um, either is okay. Uh, virtual labs may be a bit slower, but it does allow you to uh, share screens. If you are using virtual labs, I re uh, recommend that you uh, save your folders your projects on a shared drive rather than on the virtual server itself um, just in case the virtual server is lost for any reason it's backed up onto a shared drive somewhere on the cloud 
whether it's Google Drive or Dropbox or even through your email. So um, the other method again is to use uh, NetBeans locally and uh, you should have no problems just saving it on your local machine. So again, as you go through the course and you're using NetBeans and developing in Java, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions um, regarding getting set up in NetBeans and I'd be happy to help. Great and enjoy the rest of the class.